Okay, hello everyone. It is your boy Thinker St. James, and uh, I am going to do my next prediction blog on uh, Don't Flop Set the Standard 10, the final Set the Standards. Um, I didn't anticipate doing uh, another Don't Flop event as my next battle blog uh, directly after doing the 5th birthday weekend predictions blog, but it just so happens that they have an event coming up, and um, I also am kind of glad about it because I wanted to speak on a couple of things regarding Don't Flop. Now, Don't Flop is a league that I love and respect greatly. Like, I really like the energy that the Don't Flop crowd has. I like the diversity of the battlers. I mean, you know, I just watched the most prob Rapunzel proposal and that's you know sweet and gorgeous and all that shit I mean you know it's 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 a beautiful thing and like things like that are great and I love don't flop for being able to be a league that has you know the 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 range of you know of talent of people you know etc cetera, etc cetera. I, I love that 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 kind of thing can happen in don't flop so you know I really like appreciate don't flop as a league so um the deal with disaster and er was kind of upsetting to me what i'm talking about is um you know if you follow battle rappers like i'm not a person who uh posts on battle forums or anything but i follow a lot of battlers on twitter I've, i'm friends with a lot of them on facebook and just being involved in the battle culture for a long time like i see what's going on you know through those channels and um essentially what happened was uh disaster was apparently treated pretty poorly by Ur in um, in England regarding his battle with uh, uh, Unanimous for the fifth birthday weekend, and he disaster spoke at length about it to Norbs of URL, basically just stating his case that apparently Ur is not very good to his international battlers. Um, when they come over to England for Don't Flop events. Now, I um, had spoken in my last Don't Flop prediction blog uh, about her a little bit. Um, if you listen to that one, you'll hear what I said about it. But um, I, I basically just said that that Ur is a little bit of, kind of a little bit of a character. He's sort of, uh, you know, temperamental. He's kind of temperamental, Ur. And, uh, you know, that's what I said about it then. And um, I, you know... No, having seen Ur for a long time in battling, you know, there's a bigger picture that you can paint um, even before Don't Flop with the WRCs and, um, you know, grind time appearances and just, you know, every like, like the, the if you piece the whole puzzle together, you know, you have a bigger picture of Ur as a person. And, you know, I kind of like chalk it. I chalked it up then to to Ur being, you know the top dog at, at, at don't flop and whatnot. But like if what disaster said is true, uh, you know, then that's really very upsetting to me because, you know, don't flop is like I said, such a great league. They do such great things. And like, it really would hurt to know that like off camera, the people who are battling for don't flop are being treated really poorly um, in comparison to how great, don't flop events are everything on camera is so good you know it, it like it really would suck to know that that's the situation like i'll put a link in the comments um to what disaster said about his interactions with Ur and what led up to uh disaster spitting in Ur's face apparently um but um does that i mean uh, uh Ur has not uh publicly commented on the incident which is a little fishy to me being that you know it like if he feels that 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 the incident deserves um you know some airing out and that he was not in the wrong that disaster was in the wrong that is something i would think would come out and what i'll say about disaster in that regard is that i mean we all know disaster is a very boisterous character you know he's big he's a, obviously an amazing rapper you know he comes off as kind of like this you know over the top sort of entity uh in battle rap but if you listen to Disaster off camera, um, off the, the battle stage, so to speak, you know, if you listen to him in interviews and whatnot and blogs and everything, he actually really is sort of a down-to-earth guy as far as I've seen. You know, he'll call shots at people and whatnot um, to try to get them, you know, get them roused up. Like, he'll, he'll, he'll try to stir the pot. But as far as, like, things in the politics of battle rap goes, 
he is a pretty down-to-earth guy, and I don't really see any reason for him to be lying about this interaction. So that's another reason why Er not responding to it is kind of a little bit fishy, because I'm like, uh, you know, Disaster really laid it out in very clear terms. And um, and also, if Disaster, if what Disaster said about um, uh, Archaic acting up during his rounds is true, then, I mean, that definitely lends credibility to what he said in, in total. And, and you know, we'll listen to the uh, to the audio from the link that I'm going to post, and you'll you'll hear what I'm talking about. But um, overall, I mean, just that incident really was upsetting because you know I have a lot of respect for Don't Flop. I have a lot of respect for Ur and all of the UK fans. Also, shout out to all the uh, Don't Flop fans who uh, commented and liked on my uh, my last uh, prediction blog. You know, please do the same for this one. And that being said, you know, it's really upsetting to think that Er would uh, would treat his internationals that way and uh, not have respect for his international opponents, especially a guy like Disaster, who obviously brings in, you know, fucking 100,000 view battles all the time. I mean, that would be really upsetting to, to, to think about, you know, Er not treating people properly. Um, you know, I understand and respect the fact that Er has a lot on his plate as the, the, the top dog at the league. But, um, you know, I mean, these battle rappers are basically, you know, battle rap could not exist without these battlers. So to not treat them properly is kind of shitty. And I just hope that that's not the case. So I just wanted to speak on that before I spoke on anything else, uh, with this event. Okay, so this event that I'm talking about here uh, today is Set the Standard 10. This is the final Set the Standard event. It is coming up on the 14th and 15th of December uh, in London, and that's awesome. And so this uh, card is pretty good. It's definitely not as good as the 5th Birthday Weekend card, in my opinion. Um, I had to go through and look at a lot of these battlers again. Um, not that I didn't know a lot of them, but I just wanted to be a little bit more well-versed in uh, my predictions here. And um, that was cool. Uh, the the um, magnitude, so to speak, of the card is not as big as other uh, some other Don't Flop cards have been. Like I said, the, the, the fifth birthday weekend was a little bit uh, more impressive than this card. But um, it is a set-the-standard event, and... Uh, you know, they are kind of the sort of the up and comer events, so to speak. You know, the the ones that that are like kind of like proving ground esque uh, events to uh, you know showcase some new talent. So it was good to see some of these guys uh, again. You know, when I was doing the research, and um, overall, it is a good event, and I am uh, definitely looking forward to a lot of these battles. So let's get into this card. Uh, the top build battle on day one is Soul versus Lo Pesci. Now, Soul, uh, I apologize to everyone in my last prediction blog. I was, I mixed up Soul and Zen. Um, that was, uh, my mistake. Like I said, I can't be, you know, 100% on top of every fucking battle, battler, all this shit. There's so many battlers. And Don't Flop is definitely a league that has a ridiculous amount of battlers and new people all the time. And they're always bringing in, you know, people from overseas and different people from everywhere. And, you know, this guy's new and he's coming in and blah, blah, blah. So anyway. I'm sorry that I mixed the two up. Soul is the one who punched Caustic and got thrown out the league and was a bit of a prick in general. That all being said, I mean, you know, th that stuff is secondary to his prowess as a battle rapper. Uh, I just watched Soul versus Old English, actually, just uh, today. And, uh, you know, Soul is a good rapper. I, I, I appreciate Soul's performances, um, you know, besides all the other shit. He is a sound and uh, definitely, you know, decently proficient battle rapper. Good, good stuff from him. Um, he's going up against Lo Pesci. I've spoken on Lo Pesci in the past. Um, you know, I don't appreciate choking in general. That is something that you'll hear through every one of my prediction blogs. You know, choking is probably my biggest uh, gripe with battle rappers. Um, get to the fucking battle and spit your shit. You know, do it as well as you can. Material aside, don't choke. So um, that, you know, I'm not going to rehash Lo Pesci over and over and over again. But what I will say about this battle as the, uh, you know, the top of the bill here is that um, I believe that if if Soul, because in, in the um, Old English battle, Soul was stumbling pretty hard. Old English was stumbling pretty hard, too. It was not the best of battles that I've ever seen. Um, but um, I will say that if Soul really puts his shit down and gets his shit going properly, Soul can uh, can beat Lopeshi. 
Lopeshi is a good rapper. Um, Lopeshi is a rapper that I that I appreciate. His music actually a, a, a decent tick above other battlers music. I bought the fucking um, the uh, OG Hindu Kush album actually, which is a rare thing to say. Uh, me buying a battle rapper's record. Uh, just because I'm, I don't really fuck with a lot of it, I can't lie. I think battlers a lot of the times are better uh, suited to the battle forum than to the booth. But um, uh, Lopeshi is a good rapper in the battle uh, arena as well. But um, Soul, I believe, could edge it if he comes with his A game. He can't be stumbling around because Lopeshi has gotten a lot better with that, with the stumbling and the and the choking and whatnot. If they're both on their tip top A game, I think Soul could edge it. I do. I do believe that. So. Um, I will give that battle to Soul, barring any, you know, major stumbles, which is, you know, I mean, just a, a given throughout any of my predictions, you know, hard choking will will almost inevitably lead to you losing the battle. So, uh, and stumbles in general as well, you know, be be polished with your shit, you know? So, um, yeah, okay, so I'll give that one to Soul. Lopeshi could edge that as well. I mean, you know, not taking anything away from Lopeshi, and obviously he has been in battle rap, as far as the main stage goes on uh, KOTD for a lot longer than, than Soul has been involved in Don't Flop. So, you know, that could go to Pesci if, uh, you know, depending on the circumstances. But as of right now, I will give it to Soul. Okay, so next on the card is Mr. 13 versus Caustic. This is going to be a fucking bloodbath. If you listen to my last uh, prediction blog uh, regarding Mr. 13, I was the kind of... Uh, not really remembering a lot of his stuff. Um, I said in that one that I had heard more about him but from other battlers' lines than I actually remembered of his lines, and when I went back to, to listen to his rounds again, uh, I realized why. Uh, I am not a big Mr. 13 fan. He's okay. He's not terrible. He he gets through his shit, and, uh, and you know, some of his lines land. But you're putting him up against fucking Caustic. Caustic is one of, in my opinion, one of the best battlers in the U.S. right now. He uh, really is in top form at this point in his battling career. Um, I mean, I really don't have too much to say about this battle, honestly. I mean, as far as styles go, I think that Caustic is, is just going to bring the bars out. And Mr. 13 is okay with his, with his, uh, you know, bar for bar ability, but Caustic is going to use this guy as a fucking punching bag. And I really don't have too much more to say about that. Caustic will definitely take that battle hands down. So that's that battle. Uh, the next battle is, uh, pretty much, I think my favorite of the matchups on this card. It is Mark Grist versus Nameless. Mark Grist, we all know from his battle with Blizzard, uh, you know, and from being just this sort of uh, highly intellectual battle rapper, you know, he's in that uh, that group with Mixie. They uh, do a lot of intellectual shit with that. Um, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, the, Mark Grist is uh, is very talented. I mean, just you know, he, he lives up to that intellectual persona. Um, I. Even I took to Twitter to say that that loss that he took against, um, oh god, what the hell is this? Zane Azrai, uh, you know that was ridiculous. Uh, I mean, Mark Grist deserved a lot better in that battle. Grist is, is like I said, very talented, um, proficient with his his setups and whatnot. The thing I will say about Grist though is that being that he is so intelligent, sometimes he is setting something up in a battle round that is like extremely, you know, intricate and a lot of multis and, you know, it's leading up to something and then he gets to the punch and the punch doesn't always land because he overstated the setup. And, you know, a lot of times, man, you know, that's good shit and whatnot, you know, to show that you're technically proficient in battling, but it doesn't always equal up to a hard hit and a punch landed, so to speak. Now, that's Mark Grist. Nameless is a battler who has uh, tons of great battle footage under his belt. Really proficient battler as well. You know, also a pretty intelligent battler. I mean, really, you know, you look at what he does and what he accomplishes in his rounds, and, you know, he really does have great setups, great delivery, and his rhymes are tight. Um, I will give this battle off the bat to Nameless just because I think that Grist, his style is not like Nameless has a presence about him as well as the intelligence and I think Grist sort of rides on the you know intellectual sort of persona a little bit too much and like when you put Grist against 
a person like Nameless, Nameless has more of a total package when it comes to battle rap than Mark Grist does. I think that a lot of the Grist versus Blizzard battle relied on that fact that he was battling, you know, a guy like Blizzard who was a little bit younger, you know, and sort of a kind of one of these, you know, sort of chatty Chihuahua type of type of rappers and whatnot. Um, you know, it was as they build it all over the internet. It was the teacher versus the student battle. This is not the case. Nameless is a presence in battle rapping. It's actually really good to see Nameless on a card again because he really doesn't battle all that much nowadays. I mean, he's not one of like your mainstays in in, uh, in King of the Dot. Like he is more of a judge nowadays uh, than anything else, as far as I've seen uh, recently. So it's good to see Nameless again on a card, uh, especially a card like this one. You know, international and whatnot. Um, I will give that one to Nameless. Uh, Grist can take it if he really brings some out-of-the-box type of bars to it, but I'll give that one to Nameless. So, that's that battle. Next is C Major and Cracker versus Archaic and Skirmish. Now, C Major and Cracker just took that loss to Shuffle T and Marlowe. Uh, I will talk about that in my recap blog uh, of the 5th birthday weekend event whenever all of those battles finish coming out, but um, I thought that that was a deserved loss, in my opinion. I am not at all hating on C Major and Cracker. I think both of them are actually really good rappers. Um, I definitely think that Marlo and Shuffle T took that battle between the two of the four of them. But, um, so, okay, that's, that's speaking on that. Uh, they are, are definitely good and um, have a lot of, uh, of, of ability between the two of them. Archaic and Skirmish. Now, I obviously know Archaic. He's been around for a really long time. Skirmish, I don't know at all. I, I've never... I, I, I looked a, a little bit and tried to find some battle footage. He's got some um, non-battle videos out. Uh, I haven't done too much research beyond that. I was trying to find some, you know, an actual one-on-one -on -one battle uh, with him in it. And that's actually something that I want to um, speak on in, in general, that I don't feel that two-on-two -two battles are a great judgment of individual battlers' prowess because you have a much different dynamic when you have a partner and you have two opponents. It's a lot different than a one-on-one -on -one type of deal. And I say that now because of the later Shuffle T and Marlowe battle on the day two of this event. But um, that being said, I could not find anything on Skirmish, so all I have to really go on is Archaic. I would say that Archaic, you know, is a longtime battler, you know, has had a lot of really great battles, uh, can definitely carry his own in a one-on-one, -on -one, -on -one, can do his thing on a two-on-two -two as well. I, off the bat, kind of have to give it to C Major and Cracker, only because I don't know Skirmish well enough to do a full round, well-rounded review of everybody, but, you know, having that as the case, uh, C Major and Cracker versus Archaic and Nobody... <laughs> you know, or, or archaic, and someone I have no idea who he is, they can take that. So I will give that battle to C Major and Cracker, not knowing who are, uh, who of uh, Skirmish is at the moment. But as every battle who I don't know who the people are, Skirmish has the ability to uh, come and, uh, you know, really impress me with what he has to say, being that I, I don't have any frame of reference. So off the bat, C Major and Cracker, archaic and Skirmish, you know, be impressive, and you can win that one. Okay, next battle is Big J versus Lefty. They are two-on-two -two, uh, battlers as well, and uh, you know partners in in their in uh, in the two-on-twos. Uh, both really decent uh, battlers and uh, a good team as far as the battles that I've seen with them together. Of the two of them, having rewatched a lot of their footage. Big J, I feel it has a bit more um, of the well-rounded delivery and uh you know the, i mean the, the bars are kind of equal between the two of them in my opinion i don't think that uh, there's really a clear edge between the material but as far as battling goes you know in total i think that big j will probably edge lefty and these kind of battles are always fun because you know obviously they know each other pretty well they've uh they've done a lot of battles together so you know hopefully there'll be a lot of material that will be not necessarily overly personal but just things that are more crafted to the indiv individual because they know each other so well so um that's that battle i'll give that one to um big j lefty can can uh, can come out the gate and and you know bring some amazing performance if he wants to but uh off of what i've seen i'll give that to big j next battle on the card is 
Seaslin versus Nat Trill. Seaslin I've seen a couple of times. He's uh, kind of a dude who is not always around but has been sort of in it for a minute. Um, you know, he has some of the older Don't Flop footage, uh, which was cool to watch again. Um, Nat Trill, I watched a, a battle or two of his to get a frame of reference. He's not bad. Um, but he's kind of just okay in my opinion. Honestly, this is not really that uh, an overly impressive battle to me. I think that Seaslin will take it just off of what I've seen, but Natural could edge it if he brings some crazy performance, but overall I'm just like, eh. I mean, this is not like, uh, you know, any kind of make or break battle, uh, as far as this event is concerned. So Seaslin, you know, I'll give it to him on that one. The next battle on the card is more impressive to me. It is... M versus Old English. Now, as I said, I just watched Old English versus Soul, and that was a really good battle, except for the fact that they were both sort of stumbling on their lines a, a decent amount, but the content was, was there, and I really did enjoy that one. M is a really good battler. I've seen a couple of his battles, uh, you know, before, and I, I really, uh, you know, I think he's a really decently polished uh, uh, battler. He has a good amount of the material that uh, I feel wins a battle, you know, I mean, the, 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 the fiber of a battle or so to speak, you know, he, he definitely has all of that. So, um, that, this is a good match. Um, I will give it to, I feel like, like, this is kind of a tough one because I feel like they're both really like evenly matched. Um, I'll give it to him off the bat. Uh, but this is yet another one. I mean, I feel like I'm broken record saying it over and over again, but, uh, you know, I feel like old English could take that battle. Um, you know, if the bars are there and the performance is there, I feel like M is a little bit more polished, uh, than old English as of what I've seen. And, you know, I mean, granted, I'm uh, judging a lot off of the, the soul battle that I just watched, but, um, you know, old English has to come a lot better than that as far as performance goes in order to beat M. So I'll give it to M off the bat. The last battle of day one is Cystic versus Seuss. Cystic is a really, really proficient battler. I uh, I really enjoyed watching uh, uh, some of his other battles. Uh, you know, he has good flips. Um, he does his thing really well. Uh, I think he's well constructed with his bars. Seuss, you know, I know he's definitions boy and they're friends and whatnot, but he's just okay. I, I mean, you know, I've seen some of his, uh, his other stuff. And, uh, you know, he's not always around, and I kind of think that there's a reason for it. Uh, you know, he, he uh, watching the uh, Tricky P battle where he just got trampled, in my opinion, you know, I, I, I feel like Cystic is going to take that one pretty easily. So, you know, Seuss can, can, if he's gotten his bars up to some amazing level, you know, might have a chance with that. But uh, off the bat, Cystic will take that one. So that rounds out day one of set standard 10. Uh, day two has a really awesome main event top billing battle. It is uh, Shuffle T and Marlowe versus Marv 1 and Quest McCody. Now, Shuffle T and Marlowe just won the 2 on 2's title, and I felt that was well-deserved. And they are going up against Marv 1 and Quest McCody. Now, that's a great team in general, and also, it's nice to see Marv 1 and Quest McCody on a card in general nowadays. Marv 1... A great battler, great, great battler, old school battler, you know, he's he comes from the, uh, you know, the OG days of battle rap, and um, Marv 1 versus Pat Stay is absolutely one of my best, or maybe one of my favorite battles, uh, just because, you know, I feel like Marv 1 is a battler that when the stakes are high like they were with that, you know, there was an incident that led up to it, you know, there was a lot of talk about it, you know, it was a anticipated match i felt like he matched his material very well to that that battle i don't think that this battle will be anything anywhere near that battle just or anything like that battle more to the point just because circumstances are much different but what i'm saying with that is that marv one is a crafter of bars and a great battle rapper quest mccody also another great battle rapper from the old school don't see a lot of quest mccody anymore i you know i guess he's out making music or doing whatever the hell he's doing but i mean like you know and that was why when I saw this battle, I was like, oh shit, Quest McCody's coming back? That's cool. <laughs> you know, so cool to see the two of them um, teaming up again and, uh, and, and doing their thing in a two-on-two. -two. 
Off the bat, I will give the battle to Shuffle T and Marlo just because those guys are fucking great, man. I mean, I, you know, I don't really think that there's like, like if you're a fan of entertainment in general, take it out of of, of hip hop and tough thug shit and and rap in general and all this blah 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 bullshit that everybody likes to get on. If you're a fan of just entertainment, <laughs> you know, if you like to laugh, if you like to have a good time. Shuffle T and Marlo, come on, man. Those guys are just, they know what they're doing with that shit. You know, they're very theatrical. It's like a fucking, you know, a, a, a play every time that they're on the stage together. It's a lot of fun shit. And um, I think that Marv 1 and Quest McCody have the ability to definitely get down and fun with their shit as well. Like, you know, they being, even though both of them are, you know, sort of like have a little bit more street in them, well, a lot more street in them, you know, just off of who they are. Uh, you know, as people, um, I feel like they are also, you know, witty enough and clever enough to come up with a great performance against a pair like Shuffle T and Marlowe. So I think that's going to be great. I think it's going to be a really, really great battle. In fact, that probably is going to be the, 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 the battle of the card, you know, but, um, yeah, off the bat, you know, Shuffle T and Marlowe on a streak, man, like I had said in my last predictions, they both are, are proficient, uh, in solos, they're great together. Um, really great to see Marv and uh, and Quest come back. Uh, but off the bat, Shuffle T and Marlo, that's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to be a really, really great battle. Next battle, the co-headliner of Day 2, is sort of similar to Mr. 13 and Caustic, being that I feel it's going to be another fucking bloodbath. Uh, it is Ogmios versus Real Deal. Ogmios does not stand a chance against Real Deal. I'm going to be flat out. Ogmios is cool. He's obviously very intelligent, but he's got this mumbly style with, you know, kind of one of these and stuff. And, and it, 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 that's that's a, a, a minnow and a shark tank. Real Deal is one of my favorite battle rappers. And I'm not even trying to dick ride. I'm just off of ability alone. Real Deal is excellent with what he does. And, um, yeah, Ogmios does not stand a chance. That's a, that's a clear body bag. In fact, I even think that I feel like Ogmios has kind of stepped a couple of rungs too far up the ladder by even getting an opponent like Real Deal. Uh, I think that there are probably a, a bunch of people in the middle there that he should have battled before getting a shot like Real Deal. Uh, and yeah, like I said, I mean, no disrespect to Ogmios, he's in a very intelligent rapper. You can tell with the lines that he crafts, he knows, uh, you know, he's got a lot of knowledge to, uh, and a lot of, uh, uh, intelligence to bring to a battle, but no, nah, there, this, that's a clear, a clear cut battle. Real deal will take that. End of story. Next battle is a little bit more evenly matched. It's Youth Oracle versus Roan. Roan is a battler who has uh, consistently shown himself to be intelligent and be really proficient with his bars. You know, he brings a lot of, uh, of uh, great content to battles. Youth Oracle is a battler that um, I had known the name for a long time. I know I had seen some of his battles, but I was really glad that I looked back and watched some of his previous performances because had I not done that I don't feel like I would have brought a well-rounded um, prediction to this battle. I think it's actually going to be kind of close. I think Roan will take it just off the fact that he has done his thing for so long and been so well-rounded for so long. Youth Oracle is still kind of coming up but is a definitely a good battle rapper and uh, that'll be a great battle. I will give it to Roan. Youth Oracle can take that if he if he really goes over the top and has to really dig deep to get one over on Roan because Roan, the only thing you can really say that's negative about Roan is that he comes with a lot of sports references and I'm not really a stickler for that kind of thing. Like it's not usually something that I'm like upset about, but it's like it sometimes gets too much and I mean like as a person who uh, is a hockey fan primarily, I am not a big football fan. I like football. Uh, I'll watch football games and, you know, enjoy the sport. But, like, you know, and also not a huge basketball fan either. Um, you know, I'm, like, sort of like, okay, you know, I, I – like, when it comes to sports lines in general, this is just a general note. You can kind of understand what battle rappers are sp saying with sports bars by the content them itself. like. You know, you'll you'll line something up and you'll say something about a sports person, and it's like you know, and a lot of the crowd will react because they know the sports more than a person like I myself might know. But it's like so you kind of get it with what you know the reaction and the the setups and whatnot and the, the 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 simile about it. You know, you're like this guy for this reason, blah blah blah. You know, and that's all fine. And one or two of those is okay, but over the fucking top sports references, even with hockey, even if it was a whole battle that was just hockey references, I'd be like, this is fucking boring. Like, 
say some shit that's 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 out the box you know sports references are great but you know go a little bit farther so that's the one thing i'll say is that if youth oracle uh you know goes crazy over the top and roan is just exclusively sports as he sometimes can be that might go the other way but overall i'll say roan is a more proficient battler in general than youth oracle and i think that roan will take that one barring excessive uh sports references so that's that battle the next battle is unanimous versus chris lee's I spoke on Unanimous in my last predictions blog, and I also spoke on Chris Lee's in my last predictions blog. Both of them are, you know, these real big presence bars rapper. And in my last one, I did not know as much about Chris Lee's as I do now. I know a lot more now just for the fact that the title match happened. Um, he lost to Tony D. I guess I'm in the minority in the fact that I really feel like Chris Lee took that battle. I was sort of stunned by the reactions of the judges. I felt Chris was really good, and he he really is an all-around rapper. I I, I take back the – well, I don't take it back, but I, I definitely um, admit my ignorance in the fact that I did not know a lot of his stuff leading up to it. You know, I had known that he was a two-on-twos guy, and I think that he had teamed up with Unanimous. I would think it was Unanimous and, and Chris Lee's versus DNA and Charlie Clips, right? So, um, you know, obviously they are well-paired, and they know each other very well, and um, they have similar styles. I spoke on Unanimous in my last predictions, and I kind of have to stick by it. I feel like his presence is better than his bars a lot of the time. Um, I have nothing negative to say about him as a guy. I think he's a... a you know, as I had said in my last predictions, off camera, he is a person who understands the mechanics of battle rap and deserves to be at the, at the place where he's at. That being said, give it to Chris Lees. I feel like I'm fucking asshole for, for continuously downing unanimous, even though I think he's a cool dude. But having seen the title match and having seen unanimous in the past, got to give it to Chris Lees. And as I said, you know, no disrespect to Tony D. He's a great battler. Came pretty consistent in the title match, but I really feel like Chris took that. So, you know, that's just me. Whatever. You know, diss me in the comments. Uh, okay, so that's that battle. The next battle on the card is the finals of the top eight competition. Now, as I've said in the past, I don't have time to watch every single fucking battle that comes out. Um, so I did not see all of the top eight comp uh, competition. But I did watch the pre you know, the preliminary battles leading up to this one, which was uh, Kojay, and I forgot who he battled, but uh, it was Kojay versus somebody, and um, and Mystery versus Thrash, I think was his name, right? And honestly, I can't lie, this is a really underwhelming battle in general, and if this is the level of talent coming out of the top eights, I'm really not impressed. I can't lie. I, 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 I'm not trying to be a hater. I'm really not. And I got love for all these guys that battle. Everyone who battles, I got love for you seriously. Like, you know, anyone who steps into the battle forum, definite, you know, balls for doing it. And, you know, you deserve to get the respect that you deserve. But as far as battling, you know, in totality is concerned, Kojay and Mr. E, neither of them were overly impressive to me. Um, Kojay, I guess, is an American dude. So that's cool uh, that he entered uh, this type of competition and made it up to the tops. Mr. Re, I mean, like, I watched that battle and, like, his bars were okay and then he hard chokes in the last round and still wins it? I was like, ah, I was really upset by that one. I mean, and not that he, not that I even really feel like he deserved to lose. I just feel like he hard choked and the other guy wasn't that bad. Like, it, it's just, none of it was that great. Like, it just wasn't an overall impressive deal and... Kojay versus oh Blizzo was was who Kojay battled. I'm I'm sorry Blizzo, and I felt like Blizzo was pretty good too. Like I mean like overall the, the it was just okay battles overall, and I mean this battle not overly impressed by it. I feel like Kojay will win it off of what I've seen um, between the two of them. I mean Mystery can take it, you know, if he's ex exceedingly on point. But overall that's just that one man. I'll, I'll give it to Kojay, and I'm gonna move on from that. So, um, anyway, okay, so next battle is, is one that I'm looking forward to a lot more. That is Impact versus Mr. Tongue Twister. Tongue Twister had the battle with um, Enigma that was really cool, 
and a lot of good lines in that. Granted, he had a lot of material to work with, but um, both Impact and Mr. Tongue Twister are good battlers, and that's going to be a lot more evenly matched. I liked Impact uh, in his battle with Mr. 13. I definitely thought that he was better there. So that one's a really kind of a tough one to, to judge. Um, I will give it to Mr. Tongue Twister off the bat, but that's going to be one that I can't wait to see what the individual performances are like because that's, in my opinion, pretty evenly matched. So that's that. Um, J90 versus Flex Flexplicit. J90 is uh, one of these newer guys as well. Um, had a great battle with Bamalam. That was a really... I mean, not Bamalam. Um, with uh, Villain. And uh, that was really cool. Um, Flex Flexplicit uh, is just okay to me. Um, really not that, that great. Um, I will give that one to J90 off of what I have seen. Flex Flexplicit can... Uh, like... I mean, overall, you know, it's just the bars are not all there, and, I mean, his performance wasn't that great in the battle that I saw. I think it was him versus M, and uh, I thought M did really a lot better than Flexplicit. So, um, you know, I mean, he has potential to, to become that great, but overall, I think that um, J90 will definitely take that. Even though, side note, J90 spells his name J-A-I, which is high to me, as in high lie. Because I come from Florida, highlights is it used to be huge, still huge to me. So only thing I don't appreciate is J90 spelling his name like High 90, as in High Lie. Fuck that. Anyway, that's that. <laughs> so last battle of the card is Bleak versus Locksmith. Locksmith I had only seen one time before with a two on two with Tony D, where he's good. I mean, like he's definitely good. The only thing I will say is that. Um, you know, being involved in battle rap for a really long time and, you know, being a fan of battle rap for a really long time, we have a guy named Locksmith over here who not only battled uh, Disaster and a number of other big names back in the grind time days, but also battled Recognize on MTV in a freestyle competition and kind of won that but didn't win it by um, call and vote. So... You know, no disrespect to Recognize. I mean, he's a hometown hero. Uh, I am from South Florida and Recognize definitely put on for South Florida for a number of years and still continues to in his band Mayday. But, um, yeah, I mean, we have a dude named Locksmith, so I'm just a little bit, kind of have a little bit of a thorn in the side over the name. That being said, this Locksmith, with a Y, uh, is a good rapper, and um, I have not seen him in a one-on-one, -on -one, so as I said before, you know, two-on-twos are a lot different than one-on-one, -on -one, so it's not always so easy to judge a performance off of a two-on-two, -two, but I feel like what I did see, he is proficient enough to bring a good performance. That's him. Um, Bleak is a good rapper. He's done a number of good battles. Uh, definitely has a solid performance. His bars are well constructed. I think it's a, actually a pretty close battle between the two of them. I, I'll give the slight edge to Bleak just because I've seen more of his stuff and think that he, as a one-on-one -on -one rapper, um, has a little bit more uh, of a basis in the art form. That is not to say that Locksmith can't take that, because of what I've seen, he definitely has a presence and can do his thing. So I'll edge it to Bleak, but it's very close, and uh, I feel like that's going to be a really good one. So that, yeah, that'll be a good battle, and uh, yeah, that rounds out the card. So that is Set the Standard 10. As I said, I was not planning on doing another Don't Flop predictions blog directly after my last one, but these battle leagues are fucking cryptic with their goddamn cards and uh you know feel like not releasing them until about a day or two before the fucking event and it makes it difficult for me to get full cards to do predictions on so i was glad to be able to speak on this one and also speak on that situation with Ur and disaster and um i can't wait to do my recap of the fifth birthday weekend because of all of the shit that went down regarding um disaster and Ur and thesaurus and daylight apparently couldn't get into the country and all of the stuff uh, that was behind the scenes shit going on with it was kind of unfortunate but the battles that have been coming out from that event so far have been really good so you know big ups don't flop all day right dfafd and all that shit but, um, yeah, overall, good shit, man. Really uh, looking forward to these Set the Standard 10 battles. And, uh, yeah, I'll come back with the next prediction when, uh, you know, when another card comes out. So, uh, in the meantime, peace out.
And uh, happy Thanksgiving to all of you in my country of America. God bless, bitches.